secret rooms, hidden passageways and ancient artefacts. Hogwarts Legacy has so many exciting hidden secrets throughout the castle which I went on a mission to find. In this video I show you every secret I found within the castle, so keep watching to find out everything you may have missed. First up, have you ever wondered where these boats actually drop off the first year students? Well, I found the answer in Hogwarts Legacy. If you run to the right of the viaduct bridge, you'll come across this door labelled Underground Harbour. The lift transports you down and you reach this cave. This is the Underground Harbour where the small Hogwarts boats are docked. The first year students can get off here and take their first steps towards the castle. It's really cool that we get to see locations in Hogwarts Legacy that we've never seen before. There was a field guide page in here and a few chests so it's definitely worth a visit. The next secret I found is the Chamber of Secrets. Yep, the actual entrance to the Chamber of Secrets is in Hogwarts Legacy. If you're a Slytherin you might have seen this already but it's quite well hidden. First you'll want to make your way to the Slytherin common room entrance, turn right and go all the way down this corridor. You'll see the wizard's toilets or lavatories on your left, keep going right and you'll see the witch's toilets. Here is the famous entrance to the Chamber of Secrets. What's super cool is if you take a closer look at the sinks, they actually have a snake on one of the taps, mimicking what we see in the movie. We can also see the toilet cubicles where Hermione famously brewed the polyjuice potion, but of course it is before Morning Myrtle's time so she is not to be seen. Again, there was a field guide page here and a chest or two, so definitely a great place to visit in the castle. The next secret is one you have probably walked past a few times but have never noticed. It's this secret passageway. If you start from the bell tower courtyard, turn left and then go through this door. Go down the stairs and through another door until you reach this tapestry. Now, this is not any ordinary tapestry. The key is actually a secret door. It will lead you into a corridor with lots of different statues until you reach this big room. There is another key but you can't go through this one as well. Another field guide and more chests await you here, along with a very interesting story about a werewolf. Secrets number four, five and six relate to the solve Hogwarts secrets part of your field guide at the bottom of the exploration tab. There are three known secrets of Hogwarts and the game will reward you for finding and solving these. To make it easier for you, I'm going to tell you how to complete them. First up is the secret door that's near the headmaster's office. Once you enter the headmaster's office for the first time, look out for a key on his desk that will be near this mirror. This will be called the key of admittance. Once you've got it, make your way out and down the corridor until you reach this mysterious door. There you'll find a legendary gear chest, but what's even more special is up this very, very long staircase. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the hidden book of acceptance. Here lies the names of every prospective Hogwarts student in history. This is probably one of the coolest things I've seen in the game and I'm super glad I found it. Hogwarts secret number five is the viaduct bridge puzzle, or more so, where it leads you. First, you have to complete the puzzle which is relatively easy. You need to light the flame stands and match the number to whatever is shown on the circle on the floor. Once completed, it will open up this ladder that looks like a kind of sewage area. However, there is three different chests down here, including a legendary gear chest. The final secret challenge is in the clock tower. It's basically how to get behind these locked doors. If you look up, you'll see these four different symbols. Each one represents a different door you need to open. All you need to do is use Glacius or Arrestor Momentum to stop the dial in front of the corresponding symbol and then that door will open. Here you can see I freeze the first one and I get some loot. The other doors are upstairs. If you go through this door, up the wooden staircase and turn left, you'll see the owl one which hides a disillusionment chest. Next, go upstairs again until you reach the next level where you'll find another one across to the right. The final door is upstairs again and through this door. After solving the key of admittance, the viaduct puzzle and the clock tower doors, you will unlock three new outfits in the field guide. The last one of which is a little easter egg. They are of course Ron's famous dress robes that he wore to the Yule Ball in the Goblet of Fire. Secret number seven is this very mysterious secret door. To find this, head towards the clock tower courtyard and go over the bridge. Take a right and go up the stairs. Halfway up you'll want to stop and look behind you. As you can see, there is a hidden door with no visible way to access it. However, 
there is a way. Keep walking up the stairs and you'll see this toad. All you need to do is enter it and it will transport you into this secret storage room. If you open the door to try and get out, you will be faced with a drop where you can jump back to the staircase. Secret number eight is the impossible tower. If you look here, you'll see there is actually no door that leads out onto this balcony at all. It looks impossible to get up there, but I found a way. Starting at the clock tower courtyard, you'll need to go left and keep following the stairs up until you get to this music room. Go across the room and keep going up and up even more stairs until you reach this balcony. To get to the other one where there is no door, you'll need to go through this toad, which again will transport you to the other tower. This is the only way you can get here and it's worth it for the loop, but even more so for the great views. I hope you're a good swimmer because the next secret I found is in the black lake. You'll need to head towards this side of the castle and swim in this little gap here. You'll see this cave which you can enter and it looks so magical. The secret however is this mural. This isn't just any mural, this is depicting the giant squid which of course lives in the black lake that surrounds Hogwarts. The squid is in the game, it's rare but if you're swimming or exploring around the lake you might just see it one day. The final secret I found in Hogwarts Legacy's castle is the Death Day Party Hall. This is where the Hogwarts ghosts come together and dance to celebrate their death day. This hidden room is actually located located in the Hogwarts dungeons. First, make your way back to the Chamber of Secrets toilets near the Slytherin common room. Go straight ahead and take a left until you reach this metal gate. Keep going down through this door and you will find the Death Day Party Room. Now, I do think this is either a random or a rare event to see the ghosts, as the first time I found this room it was full of ghosts dancing with music playing, but every time I go back in to capture footage of this there are no ghosts there, and believe me, I've tried lots of times. And that's all 10 secrets I found within Hogwarts Castle. Let me know in the comments if you found these places or if you think there's any I missed. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Hogwarts Legacy content. Thank you for watching, see you next time.